Please welcome the President of the United States. everyone I'm sorry there's a tradition around where I come from the state of Delaware when there's a governor in the room you got to stand up and I'm your governor's here and I wanted to say hi to you so thank you governor, for being here it's a wonderful Thanksgiving tradition here at the White House there's a lot to say about it but it's chilly outside so I'm going to keep this short nobody likes it when their turkey gets cold <laughs> I don't know if they're mad yet or not at any rate I want to thank Ronnie Parker, Chairman of the National Turkey Federation, and his family from Monroe, North Carolina. And Ronnie's got 44 years in the turkey business, and he also is the grower of our honored guest today. And uh, Lexi, uh, he got a lot of help from Lexi, our fourth generation member of the ranch where the turkeys were raised and prepared for this very day. Uh, they don't know what the verdict, ver they're not sure of the verdict yet, but we're going to find out in a minute. <laughs> They listen to a lot of music, I'm told, in order to prepare for the crowd noise today. That's pretty, real, that's real hard work. And they interacted with the children to show their softer side. Sounds like another flock hoping to come to Washington in 2024. <laughs> but uh, look, uh, we're joined by another special guest, and that is uh, for what is the largest national turkey presentation ever held at the White House. My dear friends, I'm going to introduce them again. Roy Cooper and First Lady Kristen Cooper here. Truly fantastic news. Say hi. <laughs> We're also joined by Congressman Dan Bishop. Where are you, Danny? Hey, Dan, welcome. Great to see you here. Thank you. And uh, from the 9th District of North Carolina. And a special thanks to members of my staff for their, and their young children who are here today as well. As a matter of fact, if you look around, See that dog on the balcony there? <laughs> That's my dog, Commander. I was worried they came down here with all the issues and nothing but kiss you and lick you. They go after the turkey, so I kept them up there. But, uh, we're joined by another group of kids, as I said, from students from Brooklyn Middle School. The reason they're here in Washington, the reason they joined us today is, uh, you know, they were invited a couple years ago to come, and but because of COVID, we couldn't have it. So I'm glad you guys came this year. Thank you very, very much for coming. And we're also joined by students from the 4-H programs of Virginia and Maryland and the folks from the National Future Farmers of America. I want to thank them for being here as well. But before I gobble up too much time, uh, I didn't mean to get started, man. Don't tell me. Well, that, that's my grandson, Bo, up there. My granddaughter. Don't let him jump. <laughs> Any rate, you know, uh, let's, we got to get on with this. First of all, the votes are in. They've been counted and verified. There's no ballot stuffing. There's no foul play. The only red wave this season is going to be a German Shepherd commander knocks over the cranberry sauce on our team. <laughs> that will cause. They are big turkeys, aren't they? My fellow Americans, please welcome the 2022 National Thanksgiving Turkeys Chocolate and Chip. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, man. They go wherever they want. <laughs> of course, chocolate is my favorite. Chocolate is my favorite ice cream, so I, but I could have, we could have named them Chips and Science, but anyway, <laughs> good names as well. The chocolate chip weighs 46 pounds, and I'm told he loves catching sun on the Outer Banks. And uh, Chip weighs 47, 
and he loves barbecue and basketball, I'm told. <laughs> uh, after receiving their presidential pardons today, Chalkland and Chip are going to head to one of the nation's great basketball schools and research universities, North Carolina State. Now, when we told them they were joining the Wolf Pack, they got a little scared. Uh, but then we explained it was just a mascot for the school as one of the nation's best poultry science departments in the country. And now, based on their temperament and commitment to being productive members of society, I hereby pardon them. I hereby pardon, yes. I hereby pardon chocolate and chip. Which one's chocolate and chip? Chocolate, chocolate you're pardoned, and so are you, Chip. Chip, Chip, I know, I, I don't even have to be told. Can you do that? You can do that. Bird, man. We have more chickens than anybody in the nation in Delaware. We don't have turkeys. Look at this. Now, this is chocolate, right? Chocolate, you are pardoned. You are pardoned. You had to tell me that? Yeah, you are. Yeah. I'm serious. He said, I don't know, man. You didn't have to pardon me. I knew I was pardoned. <laughs> At any rate, thank you both very, very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. How, how many turkeys you got down there? I'm very good. God love you. Nine and a half million turkeys. I tell you what, that's like some of the countries I've been to. <laughs> anyway. Want to talk? <laughs> Look, folks, uh, in all seriousness, let, let me close with this. We can't forget the reason for Thanksgiving in the first place. Pilgrim thought it was pretty important in tough times to come together and thank God, and grateful for what we have. That's what the Thanksgiving tradition is all about, being grateful for what we have. And grateful for fellow Americans who we may never meet, but we will be there you go. They're grateful. And think about the scientists and researchers, doctors and nurses keeping us safe through the pandemic. Two years ago, we couldn't even safely have Thanksgiving with the large family gatherings. Now we can, and that's progress, and let's keep it going. We have new COVID vaccine updates to deal with new variants to protect you and your loved ones. So get it today. Get your flu shots as well. This winter can be much happier than recent holiday seasons, but you have to do your part. Please visit vaccines.gov to decide what you're going to do. We're also grateful for frontline workers that are keeping essential services going and growing and providing food on our tables. We're grateful for our faith leaders and their counsel and comfort and support. Later today, Jill and I are going to be flying down to North Carolina, to Cherry Point, North Carolina, for a Friendsgiving where we'll be serving Thanksgiving dinner to the troops and military families to demonstrate our gratitude for their service and sacrifice. And so many of those families are missing someone at their table today, like our family. So many military folks that we have lost. And, the, and so it's just really important to keep them in our hearts. Those who have lost so much and those who are gonna have an empty seat at their table this Thanksgiving. This is a special time and, uh, and is the greatest nation on earth. So let's be grateful. Scripture says, let us rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. Folks, let's remember all the political fighting goes on you read about. Let's remember one thing. This is the United States of America. The United States of America. There's not a single solitary thing beyond our capacity as a nation. Nothing beyond our capacity if we do it together, united, united. <laughs> <laughs> you picked two great turkeys. From the Biden family to all of yours, happy Thanksgiving, and may God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you all for being here.